And today I'm going to detail how the amino acid glycine supports gut health. So glycine, as many of you know, is the most abundant amino acid in collagen, comprising nearly 30% of this critical structural protein. The liver can produce small amounts of glycine, and this is why glycine is regarded as a, as a non-essential amino acid. But it's really a very small amount, so supplementation is necessary. Our gut is lined with epithelial cells, which are constantly shedding and renewing, and glycine protects these epithelial cells by reducing free radical damage and inflammation, either from ingested toxins or other repeated stressors. So because of this, glycine is a promising option for both inflammatory bowel disease and colitis, while also guarding against damage from sepsis and ulcers. Glycine is also needed to manufacture bile, creatine phosphate, and porphyrins, and all of these contribute to the breakdown and assimilation of nutrients. Bile, which is especially essential for fat digestion, is produced in the liver and used to emulsify dietary fat, which happens before the fat digesting pancreatic enzyme lipase can properly break down the fat. Porphyrins support the function of the blood protein hemoglobin, which transports oxygen to our tissues and organs, and creatine phosphate is needed to form our universal energy currency adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and in the gut, ATP facilitates bacteria host communication to maintain tissue homeostasis. Yet another function of glycine that isn't discussed too often is its participation in the removal of ammonia the powerful neurotoxin that can be produced from the breakdown of amino acids and also from bacterial overgrowth in the intestines from such bacteria as colostridia and enterobacteria. Excess ammonia is normally converted into the far less toxic compound urea and then easily excreted. This is part of what we call the urea cycle and a long-standing glycine deficiency can definitely impair this process. In foods, you'll find glycine primarily in meats like turkey, chicken, and salmon. And appropriately, the best source of glycine in food is collagen, of which, again, glycine occupies nearly 30%. I get my glycine every day from beef gelatin, which is far more functional than the more popular hydrolyzed collagen. This means that the physical benefits of collagen, like muscle growth and hair and skin vitality, are more obvious and recognizable than with the hydrolyzed form. And the only thing you sacrifice is a small amount of convenience because obviously you can't mix beef gelatin into cold liquids without it hopelessly clumping up. If you're a vegan or you just don't like getting your glycine through gelatin, you can also take glycine supplementally as either capsules or even a naturally sweet tasting powder. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.